Hello, happy Monday. Hope everyone has had a great weekend and that the beginning of their week has started well. I spent my weekend, actually, I went to visit Chris, the charity board gamer, so we could do our long, what was initially a 24, 26 hour stream. And we streamed for over 28 hours, playing over 14 games in support of the House of Afros, Capes and Curls, promoting inclusivity and kind of the nerd culture and other hobbies that are t traditionally non-mainstream for people of color. And so we streamed a lot of the games to help raise funds for them. And then yesterday we just hung out, played games. I finally got to learn Scythe with Chris which we've been talk we talked about for about two years to learn it, so that was great finally getting to sit down with him. We learned it together. He's going to hate that I say this, but yeah, I beat him. But he didn't beat me much over the weekend. He's, he was a bit upset about that. But yeah, so I am Justin, a.k.a. Jaybird, the word, and the word is joy. And on this on this channel, I like to play games and spread joy about my favorite hobby. So... I invite all to join me. Everyone's invited. Everyone supports each other. That's the whole point. Over this other shoulder, you actually see something I just got in the mail. This is a meeple pie apron. Yes, I enjoy cooking, but this apron is actually from the board game Beast. Daniel made an amazing, uh, well, like I said, apron, but it just the picture, the picture itself with kind of getting ready to cook and the pot, the meeple right on the pie is really cool. We didn't intend to have it for during our big stream this weekend, but it came in just a little too late. So I decided I'd show it off on stream today for everyone watching. So yeah, today is Meeple Monday. On Meeple Mondays, I pull out a game. Sometimes I'm learning them. Sometimes I'm teaching them. But every game I play is going to either be one that you can play along with me at home uh, with your own copy. Or I'll show you how to play like with pen and paper or something, or you can join along with me in chat and tell me what moves to make in the game I'm playing. So today's game is actually The Princess Bride, the adventure book game from Ravensburger. I have not played it yet, so I'll you get to come along with me and learn it as I play. I hope everyone is doing well today. Um, so, yeah, if you'll come along with me, uh, and we can learn about the game together this time. So I'm going to switch my view. You can see the game. I, I did a little bit of pre-setup on it, but we'll talk about the rest of the setup as well. This game is actually for one to four players because it is a co-op game that players play together. So it works well one or with several players. Age is about 10 and up, but as you'll see, it's relatively straightforward and simple. So some younger players can play it as well. It, the playtime is about 15 minutes per chapter. This game actually has chapters in the book that you play through it has, I believe, six chapters, so if you beat all six chapters, you beat the game. But then again, you can play one or two chapters and come back to it at a different time. Um, I'm going to get through as many chapters as I can tonight. Hopefully, the book doesn't beat me. So let's switch switch over. We'll show it off. So yeah, you're going to be seeing me pull out the rule book a lot tonight, because I don't know the game as well as usual. Um, but that's okay. We can learn it together. So this game actually has... The adventure book. So instead of a board, it uses a book for the for the board. You open it up. Each page is a different board. So we open it up to chap to chapter one. Uh, I set up, pre-shuffled some of the decks, set, set all the chits and pieces aside, so we're ready for first game, and then we'll get to chapter one setup. So the chapter one setup is actually the name of it is as you wish. So, beginning of the story, Let, let's see what the book says. So, the story so far. Buttercup enjoys nothing more than tormenting the farm boy, whose only reply is, as you wish. Hello, Peter. How are you today? I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I know I did, hanging out with Chris. It was a lot to do, but well worth everything I did. Tell me what games did you play? Did you watch anything cool? Did you just hang out? 
relax all weekend. Let me know what you did. Oh, yes, I remember you said you, you drove and uh, to Virginia, which... Where in Virginia did you drive to? Cause I, and where did you drive from, um, if you're open to saying it? Because, as you know, I'm in Maryland right outside of D.C. Of running through Jaws of the Lion. So I've opened that game. I still need to start playing it. Uh, realize my head's off screen. Whoop, whoop. There we go. Hope that helps. Uh, so, okay, from Massachusetts. Yeah, so I'm in out, right outside D.C. in Maryland. So driving to Chris this weekend, it was about a six-hour drive into West Virginia at a low volume for you. Okay, let me see if I can turn it up a little bit. Uh, I had to make a few adjustments from taking my computer over the weekend to do streaming with Chris. So I appreciate you telling me that something is up. Let's see what kind of filters or anything. A little bit of gain might help. Okay, tell me how that sounds to you now. Oh, yeah. I think we've talked about uh, your, your sister living up around here. Does that sound any better, Peter? Tried to up the game a little bit. There we go. Yep. It's always hard to know until someone's in chat and tells me otherwise. So I appreciate you being here, Peter. Let me know just how good it sounds. Um, and I slightly shifted where I have the mic because I know I'm going to be leaning over a bit. So hopefully I'll, I'll try to speak up tonight as well. Uh, so as it shows, I'm playing The Princess Bride, the adventure book game. So you have Jaws of the Lion set up in our guest room, only played the first mission so far. Well, hello, uh, Mankalore. Hopefully I said the right, if I'm, if, there's a different way to pronounce it or prefer uh, your actual name to be called. Uh, please put it in chat. Uh, Puma Peter. Uh, I've got to get to know him online. So I know he's Peter. I am, if you don't know, I am Justin, a.k.a. Jbird underscore the word on Instagram and other social media. And I run Play Games Spread Joy where I like to play games and spread joy about my favorite hobby. Uh, and today I'll be playing and showing off the Princess Bride adventure book game uh, as part of my Meeple Monday streams. And then Peter's talking about how he has Jaws of the Lion set up in the guest room. So I've opened the game. I have yet to start playing it. Um, so what I may do one Monday is start the game here on stream and y'all can help me choose the character I use. Because I've heard a lot of different opinions on what what character is the best one what you should start with so maybe i'll play it have have y'all play with me in chat but how are how was your weekend uh Mankalore? um did you play any games do anything cool I, I was just talking to peter how i was actually in west virginia with chris the charity board gamer helping co-host his charity stream which we played over 28 hours on stream in two days 14 different games raising funds for the house of Af afros capes and curls which basically promotes and supports more inclusivity and in kind of uh board gaming uh comics nerd cultures and stuff for people of color and so that went really well i just drove back today so i kind of got back set up and peter was helping me make sure my mic was <laughs> loud enough um, so yeah, I have not actually played The Princess Bride yet. Y'all helped me open it on stream, what was it, about two weeks ago. And so, I'm going to learn it on stream today with y'all. If you hang out with me, you can tell me the moves you want me to make, because I'll show you what cards I have in my hand. So a lot of times, I either choose a game, you can play along at home, kind of beat my score, or you can t tell me in chat what moves to make. So if y'all are ready, I'll get to the setup because this game has what i read it has six chapters if you beat all six chapters you technically beat the game chapters are about 15 minutes long each and each have a different page in the book and each so each page is a different board so i'm probably gonna have to reference the rule book a lot let me know if y'all have played it before or not um 
either way, we're going to have fun trying it. So chapter one is As You Wish, and it says the story so far, Buttercup enjoys nothing more than tormenting the farm boy, whose only reply is, As You Wish. So per the rule book, we're going to set up As You Wish, um, follow the instructions for standard chapter setup, which I've done is shuffling the different decks of cards, setting out all the tokens, getting my little reference card, and then the replay tile over here that gets flipped if we lose and then we're going to take Wesley and put him in the bar so this game has great little miniatures we use some we don't use every single one in each chapter but we'll be pulling them out so it says pull per the rulebook Wesley goes to the barn over here and then Buttercup goes to the farmhouse uh, we're going to place one chore counter on the wood horse and well spaces so the chore counters are these piles of wood uh, that they use to track it and so it says we're uh, like we said we're going to put it on the wood pile the horse and well spaces so there's the well there's the horse and then we take the other ones and put them on the list of chores We're going to place a miracle counter on the star space. If we pick these up, we can turn them in to perform basically miracles in this chapter or later chapters so we can collect them, hold on to them if we choose to decide when to use them. Uh, okay, so Peter, you really want the, this game for the nostalgia, so it sounds like you have you don't have the game and you probably haven't played it yet, but hopefully you can help me play and we can beat the game together. Because um, when we opened it, we really looked at all the artwork close up, and we did, and it was really cool to see the nostalgia from the movies pop back up. Because it has been a while since I watched the movie. Uh, let's see. I placed the miracle counter. And we're going to read through the rules and challenges for the chapter. So for this chapter, the rules are chores, which, like we just talked about, the tokens. During the storytelling phase, the active player may discard a card to move a chore counter in Wesley's space to the list of chores, bringing them off the board and into this set of chores. Uh, see, and then the chapter is interrupted if there are no more chore counters remaining in the list of chores when you would need to place one on the map. So occasionally it's going to force us to take more chores, put them back onto the map, so we're trying to prevent us from running out, and we're also trying to complete enough chores to complete certain challenges. So we have three different challenges we're trying to complete for this chapter. And the first one is there must be two or fewer chore counters on the map. Currently there are three. So we're going to have to get rid of at least one. Uh, and let's see. And Wesley and Buttercup must be on the same space. So as we're playing, we're, we're able to move the figure figures around. So we need to get them to the same space, complete a chore, and then we can complete that challenge. And we get a reward, we could draw one card from the special deck. So we have a regular deck, and then we have some special cards that we can occasionally add, add in. True Love Challenge requires Wesley and Buttercup must be in the, in the barn. And reward, draw a card from the special deck over here. And then Seek Fortune requires Buttercup must be in the barn. Wesley on to the fortune space down here and you must have completed the other's challenges. Reward, you complete the chapter. Now to complete challenges, we also have to discard cards from our hand that match the symbols for that challenge. So let me verify how many cards I should start with in my hand, and then we can start deciding our first moves. So we've got the reference cards, we got that. So deal four story cards to each player. So the regular deck are story cards, I believe. Let's make sure we get that right. Because we have two different decks. We have the green deck and regular deck. Yep, story deck. So the green is plot. These regular ones are story and they're special story cards as well. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the detail view on so I can show you the cards in my hand. Probably need to adjust the lighting on that camera for the next stream. But for now, tell me if you can't see the colors, but there sh you should be able to see a green, a blue, and two black, which is going to be critical. The words on those are always going to be the same words for these colors. Green is adventure, blue intrigue, black is revenge. There's also going to be some red, I believe it's love cards. There's uh, orange adventure. No, no, green. I just said green is orange is courage is what it is. Oh, thank you. Uh, which hopefully for the next stream, the quality of the camera should be a little bit better too. Chris, when I was with Chris this weekend, he blessed me with some cameras that he's no longer using, sending me along with some higher quality webcams than the current webcams that I have that are like $20 webcams. But using Streamlabs OBS, it's super helpful to do a layout as, and now I just have to work on the quality of what they look like, but it is a fun setup. And then hopefully y'all can actually see what I'm using. Tell me if I need to make any changes because I do want y'all to be able to see it and help and help me play along. Uh, it does look a little bright. I'll try to move, put the black on the left side and then I'll put the colored ones to the right so they don't glare as bad. See if that helps. Okay, so we've dealt the cards, we've set up the chapter, and now we can begin playing. So on our turn, we do several things. So we, we, we actually have a reference card. It's going to be a little hard to read because of the glare and the writing, so I'm just going to read it off to you all. So on your turn, you do the following five steps in the order listed. We always begin with move. We either move a single character, zero to two spaces, or two characters, one space. Now, we do know that we need to get the characters together on the same space, and we're going to have to work on doing some chores. So, for sure, Wesley needs to leave the barn. So what do you all think about moving Wesley to one of the first chore spaces. Let me know what you think, or if you have a different idea. On part of the later parts of the turn, we'll be able to start drawing more cards and finding the actual color symbols we need, but I think for now, I'm just gonna have to work on completing some chores. So unless I hear otherwise, I'm just gonna start moving Wesley for this, this turn. Um, so if you're playing co-op, because this is one to four players, the moves and everything happen on the turn in the same order, just instead of me being one player doing this, basically repeating the process every turn, pass the next player, they get to do it themselves. But all the characters on the board, every player can move. You don't play as one of them, everyone plays as all of them. So I haven't heard anything else, so I'm going to move two spaces and connected spaces. This barn. First connects here, and let's go out here to the horse space. I move to with the one character. So step two for the turn is storytelling. In this step, you may complete any or all of the following actions in any order. So once per turn, we're allowed to trade cards if there were other players. Uh, you could trade one card in your hand with one card from any other player, and you can only do this once per turn. So I'm going to be skipping ignoring the trade part because I'm playing alone, obviously. Uh, we can discard any number of cards and move one character, one space per discarded card. And you may do this more than once on your turn. Now, we know we just stopped where we want, so we're going to wait to discard any cards. But we also know these black cards we probably won't need for this chapter, so they'll be good discard options. We can also complete a challenge... So does Wesley have more than one mini, like Farm Boy and Tread Pirate? He does n not. 
so I'll show you the minis real quick. So we have the Black Wesley mini. We have Buttercup in red. And then for the later chapters, we're going to end up pulling out... I'm probably going to get the names wrong unless I look them up. We got Inigo Montoya in the brown with his sword. Fezzik, kind of our, our giant tall guy. Nice and simple. In green, we have Vizzini. We'll find purple is Prince Hupperdink. And then near the end, we're going to find Count Rugen in yellow. But Wesley does already have his sword at the ready. Andre the Giant. Yep, you're right. Our gentle giant. Lovable friend. Okay, so... Uh, where were we? Move, uh, turns. So we can discard cards. We complete complete a challenge, or challenges if we meet the requirements. Count is the six figure man. Yep. Uh, completing challenges, uh, we can complete these by discarding cards from our hand that match the symbols in the challenge, and meeting the requirement. Then we'd be allowed to place a token on that challenge. So I can't do that this turn, obviously. And then we could also, any player may play special cards. If So once we end up with special cards in our hand, we can play those. Or we can also use a miracle to draw three cards from the story deck or draw one card from the special deck. So the miracles are the star tokens that we can pick up as we play. We can either use them or hold on to them for future chapters. So then after we do the storytelling step, we'll get to move on to basically drawing, doing some plot and discard stuff. So first we need to decide what we want to do right now. Part of the special rules for this chapter is, where is it? During the storytelling phase, which is what we're doing right now, the active player may discard a card to move a chore counter in Wesley space to the list of chores. So I think that's the easiest and the most straightforward thing for us to do right now. I'm going to discard one revenge card to discard the chore to the list. Now what we could do is start moving by possibly by discarding more cards because near the next step of the turn is we're going to get to draw cards. Um, we're going to draw cards from the story deck which are the cards up here that go into our hand. So we're always going to end up drawing two cards again. And then we're also, while you're telling the story, you'll have to deal with the number of interruptions. So we'll have to deal with plot cards as well. And then depending on which number is drawn, we do one of the two things from the plot table. So I, I think discarding some cards to move some characters around as we wait to draw into the symbols we need is and to start discarding more chores is our best line of action I'm thinking since I know we won't need green or blue blue colors all three of these are kind of extra we can discard right now so I'm thinking I'm going to advance Wesley three spaces, discarding three, to move him to the wood pile to, so we can take care of that chore next turn. And that, that also gets Wesley and Buttercup closer to the same space. If you agree, disagree, let me know in chat. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep going. Because, like I said, this is a co-op game, game, and I do what I can to have chat play along, if y'all choose to. Of course, you're not required to. You can chat along, you can lurk, just listen, do what you like to do. I'm here to play the game, spread a little joy. 
whichever way spreads joy to you, you do you. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna discard those three like, like I mentioned. Go ahead and move one, two. Let's go three here. Because the wood pile is not connected to the here, we would have to go around. So I'm gonna at least stay near Buttercup in case we do draw into red we already meet the other requirements of having two or less chores on the board. So now I'm going to move to part three of a turn, which is draw. We draw two cards from the story deck. So let's see what we're going to draw into. Okay, we got Intrigue Blue and a green Adventure card. So not quite what we wanted to find because we really want that red. Uh, so now we're going to move on to the plot. And while we're telling the story, we'll have to deal with the number of interruptions from the grandson. Because, of course, we're reading the story to him. So we're going to discard the top of the plot deck, which is the green deck, and refer to our current chapter's plot table based on the number drawn. So let's draw that top card, see what happens. So this is card number 20. And let's read the bottom of it for the fun of it. Because we can stop now if you want says the grandpa. But we don't want to stop yet, do we? But with card number 20, the chapter does say, fetch me the pitcher. So we're going to move Buttercup to Wesley's space. Then draw and resolve another plot. Okay? So that means we have to do another plot card. And this number is going to be 19. I thought I shuffled these. Maybe I did, maybe I did. Yep, don't stop. <laughs> Uh, 19 says, your vote of confidence is overwhelming. Well, there you go, Peter. There's a great vote of confidence for you right there. And again, it's another fetch me that pitcher, question mark. Move Buttercup, which we've already done before, and we're going to draw another plot. 18. You know what? I didn't shuffle. That's the one deck I didn't shuffle. Now that I look at it. So this is not going to work out well for us if I don't sit here and sh reshuffle and redraw some of these cards. So forgive me for messing up. That's part of the learning process. And that's why we have to shuffle. Because otherwise, it wouldn't go anywhere. So I'm going to do some shuffling here. Nice. I wish I looked like a young carabiner. <laughs> So I'll probably read all the quotes on these cards. I'll probably get them get them wrong. Won't be able to do a good voice for them. But here for the company, my friend. Well, I appreciate it, Peter. I appreciate the company as well. I hope you enjoy it. And hopefully you have a chance to get this game yourself and try it as well. So now that I've shuffled these plot cards, we can try this again. We'll act like we didn't draw that first one. Com company, my friend, and games, of course, because we're doing games here. We're playing games. We're spreading joy. That bond we share. <laughs> okay, so let's try this again. Now that I've shuffled the plot cards, I'm going to draw the first plot of the first turn. <laughs> 19. So I shuffled it too good. <laughs> Uh, so we've read it. Your vote of confidence is overwhelming. Um, so if we had not, if we had backed up, had not drawn that yet, but a couple have still been at the farmhouse. Now we move her and we'll draw again because anything 16 to 20 in this chapter, we move her and draw again. Manny likes games too. <laughs> well, I sure hope so because I love games. But if you don't love games, it's okay. We welcome you just the same. Hopefully you can learn to love them like we do. Next number, 13. No, I'm okay. I'm okay. Sit down, says the grandson. He's not quite ready for us to stop reading. Um, so with a 13, so 1 through 15, Farm boy, place a chore counter from the list of chores on the space with the same number as the resolved plot card. So in this case, we drew number 13. So this chore comes from the list to number 13, which happens to be the barn. Uh, 
Uh, so Peter's asking if uh, Mankalore has played Gloomhaven, um, possibly even me. I started playing Gloomhaven with a group before I moved from Texas. Uh, and unfortunately, we didn't get to play as many times as I'd hoped. Because, of course, the setup time and everything. So that's why I hope Jaws of the Lion is a lot easier to play, especially by myself. Um, but yeah, I, w I had a lot of fun with it. Just like many people know, setup and how much space it requires can be a chore. Unless you have a dedicated table to keep it on. Which, what you see here is my main table to play games on. And so, I like... To show a lot of different games. Play a lot of different games. So keeping it set up is going to be hard. Starting with Jaws of the Line before buying the huge one. That is a great idea. I do recommend both. I'm about to try to start Jaws of the Lion soon. But from what I when I opened it, I realized just seeing the difference. While there's a lot of pieces, it is less to deal with. Especially because of the map. Uh, yeah, Jaws of the Lion has... Yeah, the first few scenarios walk you through the, the game. And it has the book for the maps uh, instead of all the different tile pieces you have to search for and, and kind of puzzled together. Yeah, it, it would have been so great if they kind of just switched them. Jaws first and then the, the big gloom haven. Um, or if they considered releasing a book of the original gloom haven maps would be awesome. Half the bad guys. Okay. And then, of course, uh, Frosthaven is, is basically just as big as Gloomhaven. I wonder if they're going to do a simplified kind of Jaws of the Lion size for Frost. Okay, so I did the plot. And then for after you do a plot, you discard. If you have more than six cards in your hand, you discard down to six. So that's a turn. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, it is tough to own too many games that take up too much space. Exactly. Oh, Kingdom Death Monster. Yeah, that... <laughs> I'm not sure. I think that takes up even more space than Gloomhaven. <laughs> yeah, and as you can see, I have a lot of games. And I, even though I'm playing weekly different games, I still don't feel like I play any of them enough. That's part of the hobby is you get too ingrained in it. And you always feel like you're missing something or not getting to do enough. But, of course... With the pandemic and everyone not getting to go to game nights as often, it makes it even harder. But that's why playing online now is, has been so great. So now we can go to our next turn. If we're playing together, there's more than just me playing. We go to their turn, but I'm just going to basically repeat turns. So I'm going to move. So we can move a single character, one or two spaces, or two, a single space each. Well... I think in this case, because what? How how do I draw cards? I think the only way I get to draw cards is at the end of the turn. So I don't get to do much. So I might as well move. I'm gonna kind of keep them together because we want to draw into red. Have them together. I'm gonna move them together, one each, as part of the move. We need to play some cell phone games. Um. Yeah, I don't have as many on my cell phone. The main one I have on my phone is Cartographers, which, like we've talked about before, isn't really straight-up multiplayer. Most of what I play when playing something is on the computer. Um, but yeah, we definitely need to find something we can play, play together more often, Peter. So, if you have suggestions on that, let me know either here in chat or reach out to me because, you know, we talk in Discord, we talk on Instagram and whatnot. Okay, so storytelling. I might as well discard a card to get rid of that chore. Um, so we can't complete a challenge. We can't trade cards because no other players. We don't have special cards. We don't have miracles. So we could discard cards to move characters. I don't see a need to do that at the moment. So I'm going to move on to drawing. So we're going to draw two cards. 
and then we'll move on to our plot. Current plot is one. A book? Has it got any sports in it? Well, if you consider uh, sword fighting sports, we can say it does. How about that? So with the plot table one through 13, we're gonna get another chore onto one. Wesley is gonna have a hard time keeping up with these chores at this rate if we can't find some red and orange cards. And then we discard down to six if we have too many and we pop back up to the beginning of the next turn. So we're gonna move again. I think I may need to just go after these chores a lot faster. So I'm just gonna go one, two for his move. We'll go to storytelling. I'm gonna discard the black revenge card to deal with that chore. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking I'm going to discard the two to get Wesley back towards Buttercup. No, I need to move because we know we're going to get another chore. So I need to move and go work on another chore. Otherwise, it won't make a difference to complete that challenge. So I'm just going to go one, two to get close to the, the well. So what's KDM? So... Uh, Peter, KDM, I have not played. It is Kingdom Death Monster, I believe is the correct name for, for that acronym. It's one of those huge box games that's full of, I think, minis and maps and whatnot else. I don't own it, so I can't tell you the exact details, but I've seen plenty of people post and talk about it. Yeah, so... Tell us about Kingdom uh, Kingdom Death and Monster and what all it entails, because I don't know about how much it has, but I, I've just heard how huge the or how much space it takes up. But I think it's kind of a almost campaign style. There's a lot of different missions you can set up or play, or is it more a versus game where you have to play with other players? Okay, so I did that for the turn. So we're gonna to go to draw now. Now we got two courage cards. One to four player co-op. That's what I thought it I thought it was co-op. Um So I draw those and now I draw plot number two. Doesn't sound too bad. I'll try and stay awake. And so we gotta put a chore back on too. So how many different kind of AI decks are there, or like, I guess missions or setups are there in that game? And if I'm correct, there's a lot of miniatures that you use too. But feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Of course, you're the one that has the game, knows more about it. I'm just A, rambling, so you don't have to listen to silence. And B, I like talking about games, learning about them, even if I don't have them. The more we know, the more we can share about the hobby. So I did the plot. No need to discord, so I go to the top of the next turn. We are struggling here. to keep, take care of these chores. Um, I'm gonna move the two, deal with the barn off in the corner. So that's gonna be the move. Now I can start my storytelling. I'm gonna discard one orange to deal with the chore. Um, I think, yeah, I think I'm gonna stay, oh no, because we're just gonna get another chore. I'm going to have to start discarding cards to move forward faster. So I'm going to discard this card. So basically hunt monsters, kill them to get resources, and build armor and settlement upgrades. Awesome. So I'm going to discard that card so I can move out of the barn, get close to the chores again. And then we're going to go to the draw phase. Two cards. Well, we finally found some love. 
this is going to be key to the next turn to maybe complete at least one challenge. And then we plot seven. So this is Grandpa. Keep your shirt on. Let me read. Okay. So we're going to have to now go to number seven. Or at least they're close. And that's going to bring us to the next turn. I'm going to, ooh, yeah. I'm just going to move him one. I'll move Buttercup one out here so it's easier to get to her. Oh, this is getting rough. I can't keep up. Well, I'm going to at least discard one love to get rid of a chore. I think, oh yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna discard the other one to move onto the other chore. So we don't have to move onto it next time to complete it. Play with a, a, a ton of your wife and she's all straight board so I don't fight it because I love them too. But Gloomhaven has been the one and, and I, and, oh, you, so you've been soloing Gloom. So have you been soloing Gloom? Uh, no, you're soloing Jaws of the Lion, not Glo not the big box that you keep set up. So which character are you playing as, as you solo? Is it playing as one, or do you play as two characters together at the same time? I haven't read into the rules for Jaws. Oh, so you're soloing both. Okay. Okay, uh, back to the next turn. Nope. I did that, did that. Need to draw cards. Okay, love and an intrigue. Six is Grandpa. When I was your age, television was called books. Well, books are a great way to get a good story in. And sometimes television's better, sometimes it's not. So, what books have you read that they turned into movies or TV or vice versa? And which do you think were better? So, on average, are books or TV slash movies better, in your opinion? So, we're going to go to the top of the next turn. We'll do... Ooh. Okay, yeah. I'm going to move Wesley 2. And now, what we can do, we can finally complete... The challenge because we're on the same space as buttercup there are two or less chores on the board nope I messed up I didn't put my chore out but what I can do I can I've moved him I can discard an entry card the entry card that I won't need yet get rid of chore and now there's two or less chores on the board Hatchet and Demolitionist. So how are those working together, which, I guess, which of the two is your favorite if you were playing with someone else and you were only playing one character? Because um, I, I think Hatchet is, is Hatchet or Demolitionist have some range abilities or possibly more magic kind of stuff. I can't remember which is which because I still need to dig into them. But yeah, I'm deciding who I want to play as. Or maybe since you're playing those two, I should choose the other two to play on stream. And then you can get a little bit of experience on both. Let me know what you think. So I'm going to complete a challenge by discarding one love card, which is needed for this challenge, as you wish. There must be two or fewer chores on the, on the map. And we have to be in the same space. By doing that, I complete a challenge. So when we complete a challenge, we place the completed counter on the challenge. And when a player completes the challenge, they receive the reward listed under the challenge. So the reward for this one is draw a card from the special deck. So let's see what kind of special card we can find. Like them both. So they're both ranged. Yeah, I, I couldn't remember which one was ranged or if they were both. 
See, I'm kind of debating. I don't know if it'd be better to have like one ranged, one that's more close up abilities, or if you played all close abilities. Demo has some fun abilities like taking out obstacles. Yeah, that that's always useful, so you can get have a straighter path. So we did get a special card. It's called Inconceivable. And this one says each player may discard any number of cards and draw that many cards. So that will be useful when we start searching for certain colors. And the quote on the card. You keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. I know. Not a good accent. Probably nowhere near what it sounded like in the movie because it's been too long since I watched it. But I'm still going to read the quotes and have fun with it. Okay. So that was that. Um, I can't do anything else on this turn. So I just move on to the draw phase. Where we find some more love and revenge. Our new plot car, uh, card is number nine. Uh, Grandpa? Yes. You're very smart. Shut up. Well, nine's not a bad location because we can get a miracle there. Uh, so now we move on to the next round or next turn, however we want to call it. And we can start moving characters. Now, the next challenge we're trying to complete is true love. We're looking for two red heart cards and an orange courage card. And we also have to get both of them into the barn. Now, I could either kind of ignore the chores and just rush them to the barn. Or I work on the chores on the way there so we don't run out of chores to place. Because as you've seen, each turn we've been placing a new chore out. I think I'm going to have to take care of some chores on the way. So I'm just going to start, move, I'm going to move them both one. We'll move Buttercup towards the barn. And Wesley will start working towards chore, the chore spaces. So that's going to be my move. Uh, now we can go on to the storytelling step. And I will, yeah, take care of the chores. Yep, great call, Peter. So I'm going to discard a reven the revenge card, which... I won't need any black revenge cards this this chapter. Take care of a chore. That's one of those. Mm. I'm going to need the love. See, these special cards, I'm also allowed to discard them the same way I discard other cards. And I can either hold on to this, start drawing into the cards, and then... We can rotate the cards, or I can just straight up discard it for movement if we want to chase after those chores super fast. I think my best option right now is to hold it and hold the love card and start just, well, a few more chores will pop up, but we need to search for the, the love and the courage on, along the way. So I'm going to end the storytelling round, draw, draw into cards. Ooh, there's Courage. Intrigue, so I won't need that one. That one will be good for taking care of a chore. Let's see what our plot is. Number 18. Nah, it's kissing again. You don't want to hear that. Now, being a card up between 16 and 20, we do move Buttercup to Wesley. Fetch me that pitcher, and we move Buttercup and draw another plot. This time it's 15. And the grandson is saying, You mean he wins? And we get another chore. Oh, that's way down there. That's going to hurt. Okay, and that was that round. Now I'm going to do move two, which we might as well move them together. Two characters, one each. They're going to be both at the chore space. Then for storytelling, I'm going to discard one card, take care of that chore. And I think I will call it for that turn and we'll start drawing into more cards and do the plot. So there's two more cards we won't need immediately. We got Adventure and Intrigue. I could probably move those over so you can read the, see all the colors a little bit better on screen. 
and we get another plot 20 because we can stop now if you want says grandpa but we won't that just means they're still together which works well for us in this instant and we draw another card 10 so then grandpa keeps reading thank you very much very nice of you we don't want the chore from that but nice of you to speak up Beginning of the next turn. Mm, now that now it gets tricky. I th think because of the chores, like we talked about, I'm going to have to send Wesley down to take care of chores before we can deal with the barn. So I'm going to move Wesley 1-2 for the move and now start taking, taking care of chores. I'm going to discard one blue... Take care of the chore. And then I'm also going to discard one green to move to the space nine. Because if I've read it correctly, the miracles are marked. Um, to pick one up, we must move through or land in that space. So we've picked up a miracle. That's simple. Now we have a miracle to use for the rest of the game. Um, where's the best space to keep that on the board so y'all can see? I'm going to put that in this corner to show we have miracles now. Miracles belong to the players as a group if you're playing with more than one person and can be used at any time by any player. To use a miracle, simply discard the token and either draw three cards from the deck or draw one card from the special deck. I think in this instance, especially with the unconceivable card that allows us to discard cards and draw into different ones if we don't like the colors we have. Discarding that miracle for three cards right now may help us plan a little bit better. Let me know if you agree, if you would play it differently. I am set up, I'm going to be drawing two cards regardless. Well, because if I have two, draw three, draw two, we put a seven, so we would lose one of those cards. So unless we use them this turn, but I'm set up to go ahead and take care of a chore. If it's a card I don't like, I could start discarding them to start moving again, or go deal with the other chore. So then we have a couple of. Do these cards carry to the next mission? No. Once you complete a chapter, you basically do a quick reset, deal new cards. Uh, reshuffle the decks and the, because each chapter has different uh, missions like we, kind of like you're saying Maraj hey Chris there he is well today what brings us together is board games specifically the Princess Bride adventure book yep we're waiting on him but then again he had a, a very busy weekend with us together and Beth went out of town this morning so Chris woke up at 3, 3.30 to take her to the airport. So I'm surprised he's not asleep right now after he got home from work. But thank you, Chris, for joining. I don't know if you're prepping dinner, just hanging out, or what you're doing. I was finishing up a preview video for Scrap Racer. What is that one about, if you can tell us? Or do we have to wait for your video? Uh, so we are currently playing chapter one of the Princess Bride adventure uh, book game. Make sure I say that correctly. This is co-op, one to four players, so I'm not having chat talk to me about how they want me to play. Going to make a pie soon. Oh yeah, we talked about the pie, but you didn't tell me what kind of pie. So we're going to wait, yeah, we'll wait for your video. Oh, and your family's going to play it. It's always great to see them on stream is a joy to ha uh, have Eli and Daniel join to play graham cracker pie well I know it's graham cracker crust but what, what all goes in that pie like what kind of filling because I've seen a lot of different fillings with graham cracker and then depending on what you say I may have to get the recipe from you and make it soon too homemade vanilla custard now that Sounds very delicious. So, let me know how, how it turns out. 
I wish I could have a, have a slice. But then again, we were busy yesterday. Meringue topping. Oh. You're going to make me crave pie even more. Oh, Chris, as you can see behind me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change so you can see it better. Yeah, right over my shoulder is the apron from Board Game Feast, uh, Daniel Winter's um, Meeple Pie logo apron. Yes. These aprons came in, like, literally got to my mailbox an hour after I left town on Thursday to go see Chris. And we, I'd bought an extra one for him. And so now he's going to have to wait for his. I did not change my web cameras yet. So these are still the two I had set up before. But yes, I hopefully for one of the next streams, they will be ready. I got home early afternoon from driving from Chris's house and I unloaded and Chris blessed me with some webcams and a large table and like bar stools and I carried those into my apartment by myself and so I wanted to rest after that because heavy table it was hot I wanted to rest um, but yeah I will be setting up those cameras so I appreciate the blessing you you brought upon me, Chris. But so back to the game. Uh, Chris, since you just joined, over here on the detail cam, we have the cards in my hand that we can use and play. The color's a little bit off. So like I talked about, once I get the other camera set up, we'll be able to adjust the lighting. Uh, but we are playing in chapter one, which this is a book. So each page of the book acts as... A new board and where was on my turn I was in the middle of the turn because we were talking if I should use the miracle which we just earned a miracle star token which we can discard for either three story cards which helps us progress by discarding to do, deal with the chores or complete our challenges or we can get a special card which we have a special card in our hand right now and this special card allows us to basically discard cards from our hand and redraw if we don't like the colors we have. So Peter agrees. He, he thinks we should go ahead and use the miracle. I like that idea so we can plan a little bit better. One, two, three. Oh, nice. That's going to help us out. So we got an orange courage, a red love, and a blue intrigue. I'm going to re reset these cards to what we need for the challenge. So to make sure we don't spin those. So now we have the two love and an orange that we needed for the next challenge. And then we have orange and blue. Now, orange and blue are needed for the final challenge, but I think we're going to have to be spending these for now. I think our first step is spending one of those two cards to deal with this chore. This will give us a little bit of leeway into completing this challenge because we do have to get both Wesley and Buttercup to the barn, which is this upper corner of the map. So what do y'all think about discarding the cur uh, the Courage card that we don't need yet and going and starting to move back up with Wesley? Because either way, we're going to, well, I can move to 10. We can potentially take care of the last chore to keep the numbers down as you wish indeed well i'm asking what chat wishes pro it are you meaning i should discard it and go and move it or should i hold on to it i feel like i missed something but just let me know uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking getting rid of it and moving because we will be drawing two more cards at the end of this turn. Need to adjust your night bot. Is it the space after the colons for the links? See, I tried to put some some extra spacing in there but it's not setting up right as separate lines i may have to set it to 
all separate timers is probably spaceport instead of enter would do it i will test that out you know what since we're yakking and talking about it so i don't forget i have it open over here i can change it right now and that one is that one let's do a quick edit so chris how is work today anything unique or special going on i hope beth arrived safe there's a space ah there we go oh it looks so much nicer there we go i'll submit save that and we will see how it looks later so you're tired. She got there safely. Well, I'm probably, I'm kind of tired too, uh, but I'm sure you're even more tired with how, how early you got up to take her to the airport. But I'm glad she's there safe. And hopefully, I, ble I believe you said it was, her sister is who she flew out to see and help with. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. But... I hope it goes well and that she's able to support her as, as needed and and it, and that you do well at home without Beth as well because I know how ADD you get without someone to keep you in line. So I may be kind of poking you every day. Hey, how are you doing? Did you take care of stuff today? <laughs> you, you did sleep, right? <laughs> okay, so we're going to discard... That one card like we talked about we're going to go ahead and move forward and then we're going to move on to the rest of the turn which is drawing cards so we get to draw two cards to end the turn okay a black and a green for sure we don't need that black one so that'll be a good discard one for later and we draw a plot this one is number 12. yeah me squirrel yeah exactly curse I like how Beth basically described me as the balance that you need. So 12 is the grandson saying, I wasn't nervous. Maybe I was a little bit concerned, but that's not the same thing. Y'all tell me, is that the same thing? So we do have to put a chore on number 12, which well, that's really close to the barn. So that may help us out ultimately. And then we move to the beginning of the next turn where we can move one character, zero to two spaces, or two characters, one space each. Like we talked about, we want Buttercup closer to the barn. And we want Wesley to start taking care of some chores on his way to the barn. So I will come down here to this chore as we work towards it. Um, for sure, we can get rid of this card, deal with that chore. Now I'm thinking, get rid of one more to now walk towards the barn. Okay, I believe that's our best option because I don't want to get rid of these three cards because they're that's exactly what we need for the challenge. And we just need to get them to the barn together now to complete that challenge. So I'm going to end basically in this round, this turn, draw two more cards again and go to the plot. So we got a courage and an adventure. Now we do need those, but we'll see how long we hold on to them. And then our next plot is number 16, Grandpa saying, I'm explaining to you because you look nervous. Now with 16 through 20, it does say that Buttercup moves to Wesley asking to fetch me that picture. And then we do have to draw another card. This one is 14. The grandson saying, Grandpa, what did you read me this thing for? And we get another chore at 14, which the great thing is we're standing on 14. Got a jet, family time, work. Awesome, Chris. Well, go enjoy the time with your family. You, we did a lot this weekend, and you didn't get to spend as much of that time with your family. So go make the most of the time you do have now. And I appreciate you having me over, letting me join, co-host with you, 
it was a blast. So go relax, go rest, and spend time with that with your family. So thank you for stopping by. Thank you for the work. So now we move to our next turn. Now that we've dealt with the plot, I think this turn I want to just move Buttercup directly to the barn with the two moves. Because then we can leave Wesley on the chore space and get rid of the chore before we move. Let me know if you agree, Peter. If you don't agree with that, you can tell me differently. We could move both Buttercup and Wesley one space each or something different. But I, I like the thought of getting Buttercup all the way to the barn because that is our ultimate goal for this next challenge. Now this game does say it's typically about 15 minutes per chapter. Of course, when we're on stream, things take longer and we talk a lot more and we hang out. So it does take longer than anticipated, but, and we're learning the game as well. I'm stopping a lot, talking to Chris, talking to you, Peter, talking about other games. So we'll play as many chapters as we're able to tonight where it's not too late where I can rest as well because I think last night, what was it? Midnight for me going to bed. Not that bad, but the three nights before, 2, 2 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., you start to lose a little bit of sleep, and I have work tomorrow. So I'll probably won't stay up too late tonight, but we're going to have fun playing as long as we can. Um, so Peter, let me know if you don't like the move I had planned. Otherwise, I'm just going to move on with it. Because I'm planning on moving Buttercup 1-2 to the barn. Wesley would stay here, begin, hit, begin the turn by discarding a chore and beginning to move. Or we could straight up ignore that chore. She would move 2 at the beginning, move him with the two extra cards. They'd both be at the barn. Three cards to automatically do. You do you, friend. Well, what we're doing here is I want you to play, be able to play with me. If you are if you want to just lurk, and that's, that's fine. Go to the barn. Okay. We'll go to the barn here. Now we can either take care of the chore on the way, or I could just run to the barn. I'm going to run to the barn now that I thought about it. I'm going to take the two cards. That is one, two spaces. One, two. The challenge is true love. We need two, two love, one courage, both at the barn. Discard the three. Complete a challenge. And our reward is draw a card from the special deck. Well, now we have two special cards and no regular cards. Um, but this special card is I hope we win. So we get to choose a player. And they would draw two cards from the story deck. You know what? I see no reason not to automatically use that. Draw those two cards right now. Because that's exactly what we need to do. We need cards. So I'm just going to draw the two cards. So we've got a green and a red. Now, we don't need any more of the love cards. Um, but we will need one. Uh, well, we actually need two green. We don't need blue. I, was, I just realized with the glare, I thought that was blue. But that is two green adventure cards and an orange courage card. But we won't need the love red card so to end this chapter we just basically need buttercup to be in the barn and wesley to be on this fortune space so i'm just going to start running towards the exit essentially is what that is so i'm going to discard one have him step out now we go into drawing cards i'm going to draw two cards we got some love. We got some intrigue. Now those are the two cards we won't need. I agree. And our plot card, number eight, Grandpa saying, wait, just wait. We're not quite done yet. He's right. We're not done. We're getting to the fun part. Okay, so beginning of the next turn, we can run, run, baby. And we're going to go one, two with Wesley. And I'm thinking now is a great time to use our inconceivable card. And then we can discard any number of cards and draw that many. So I'm thinking play that card, discard the blue and the red that we don't need. Hopefully we can draw into the cards we need. 
So I'm going to discard that card, discard the two we don't need. Draw two. Well, we won't need that one, and we won't need that one. So we're going to have a couple choices on which is next, but I think I'm going to hold those cards in case we need to move around because we're going to have chores popping up now as we wait to find the correct cards we need. So I'm just going to kind of end the turn, go into the draw phase. Black and orange. Well, we got two of the three cards we need. So we're looking like it may be at least another round or so. Let's see what happens with our chores. Number 11, the Grand Sun thing. Murdered by pirates is good. Well, we don't want anyone murdered, but always fun when you got pirates. So we need to add a chore to 11. Now, oops, I did mess up last round. I did not add a chore to number eight. I almost missed it. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna have to be careful with these chores running out because once we need to place one and we can't, we would lose, basically lose the chapter. If you lose the chapter twice, you lose the game because it's the this tile starts on replay with the grandson saying, I'm telling you, you're messing up the story. Now get it right. We flipped that the first time. We can't complete the chapter. If we'd be forced, if we can't complete it after that, then we would end it. I think we can complete this chapter the first time through if we do this right. So we'll go back to the top of the next round. What I'm going to do, I'm going to have Wesley move back two and then for the turn, I'm going to have him discard a card for a chore. Discard a card to move. And then discard for the other chore. That way, we are two spaces away. And if we draw into the other green adventure card we need, we could potentially finish next turn. So let's see what we can get away with. Well, black... Come on, green. Encourage. So we may be stuck for another round until we can find that last green card. And if we run out of cards, we just shuffle the deck. So there is... We just have to kind of keep running around completing some chores as we go about our business. Uh, plot number three. Grandson saying, hold it, hold it. What is this? Are you trying to trick me? Well, it does feel like a trick when you can't find the cards you want but that was number three. Chore goes there. Beginning of the next turn, I'm just going to have him run one, two. Discard a card for the chore. And then discard a card to be one, to center himself in case he needs to step towards another chore on another turn. End the turn by drawing into cards. Oh, orange. I want a green one. Come on, green. There we go. So next turn, we have the ability to finish this chapter. And the last plot card, we may have to draw. Well, not the last, because it's 17. You want me to read this or not? So now that that's going to put a wrench in our plans, because Buttercup has left the barn. This may not be as easy as we thought. And we do have to draw another card. This is number five. When's it get good? Well, we're almost there, kid. Okay, so that goes on number five, which happens to be where we're standing. That helps a little bit. Beginning of the next turn. Well, we do need to get Buttercup back to the barn. I'm going to move her to... And then I'm going to discard one to move her one. So then we can plan for the next turn. We're able to draw one card, which happens to be green. But I need to shuffle the deck to be able to draw again. Now those special cards that we played are now in this discard pile and can be drawn into. So we do have the potential to use them again and get some extra stuff out of it.
say backtrack. Yeah, so there, I guess you could say there's a tiny bit of deck building in it. I'm going to have to verify if these special cards that we put into the discard this time stay in for future chapters or not. That's going to be the critical point of how much deck building there truly is. But then again, each chapter is going to have different challenges, so it's going to require a different combination of different colored cards as opposed to what this chapter has done. So I am going to draw the next card. Oh, nice, we have the Inconceivable incon again. Uh, okay, so we've done that plot card number four. Grandson saying, is this a kissing book? Well, there might be kissing in it, but it's not just about kissing. It's a love story. It's an adventure. It is the Princess Bride. Fish my wish. Okay, so the beginning of the next turn, we have no obligation to stick around. But I do like the thought. Eh, there's no need to do that. So I don't want to have two extra cards. Because for the move action, you don't have to move anyone. Because you may move a single character, one or two spaces. Uh, let me verify what the card says because versus the rule book. Yeah, because on the reference card, we can move a single character zero to two spaces. So I could basically say I'm choosing Wesley to move zero spaces. And then I can finish a chore on his way out because that's how he is. He's not going to leave all the chores undone. Okay, so that was that plot card beginning the next round. I'm going to leave him there. I'm going to discard one of these cards, deal with the chore on his way out of dodge, and discard one more card to move him to two fortune space. Now, the last seek fortune challenge was Buttercup must be in the bar, and Wesley on the two fortune space, and he must have completed all other challenges. And then we discard two green and an orange. Doing that currently right now, we complete that challenge. And that is the chapter. He was always responsible, exactly. Considering his catchphrase of, as you wish. But then again, was that being responsible or out of love? Why did he complete those duties? Uh, but yeah, so that was chapter one. I'm, what I'm going to do now, do a quick reset, turn to chapter two. Let's check out the setup for that one. What challenges it and it entails. And let's see if we keep those special cards or not. So this next chapter, I don't believe uses these stores. It's going to use some other tokens. Yeah, so this is a, actually just chapter one of six. And it's considered if you beat all six chapters, you beat the game. So it's, I, I don't want to call it rounds it's more like mini missions so i'm gonna i think i have time of course you don't have to stick around peter I, but if you choose to i would more than appreciate it but of course you do you do live your life enjoy time with family and other friends too but i'm gonna at least check out the next chapter Because this next chapter is Escape by Sea. And we actually have the ship. And so, the story so far. Buttercup has been abducted by a trio of strange characters. As they make their escape by sea, a mysterious ship gives chase. You gotta chill for now. Of course, appreciate you being here. I've had a great night so far with you. It's always great when you're in chat. So, thank you very much for... For being here. So let me verify the setup on this chapter now. Escape by sea. Follow instructions for all chapters. Um, which is... Da -da -da. Oh, 
Well, you say the pleasure is yours. We're going to agree that the pleasure is both of ours because you can't take it all. Uh, it, I really do appreciate you being here, Peter. It, it means a lot to, to have you here supporting me, hanging out with me. It, it, it wouldn't be the same without you here. So at the start of each chapter, we'll shuffle the story deck and deal four. So it actually does not have you. So it does look like all of those special story cards get to stay in the deck. So like we talked about, it does have that little bit of deck building. But yeah, it's more deck building for the entire team as opposed to just a personal deck. It's fun. So we'll be using Fezzik, Inigo, and Buttercup for this round. So on this start space, we have Buttercup. Uh, let's make sure I get these right. Uh, Fezzik and Inigo almost don't fit together. And Vizini space two, which is right here. Okay. We're going to put the ship counter on the S space. Space S and a mystery ship on count on space M. So we have two tracks. We have the mystery ship and our ship. Yeah, so th this map looks really cool. Especially it looks like it uses a like a tracker right here where the mystery ship is trying to catch up to our ship. I'm going to place a miracle counter on the star space so we can attempt to earn a miracle again. And read through the rules and challenges for the chapter. So it's the missions, yeah. So I'm about to read all those. I was making sure I had all the, the cards and everything sh set up. So yeah, the instructions actually kind of walk you through the characters that get set up on the map. And then, like in order, it does actually say, okay, now read the rules and challenges, which was my next step. So yeah, I'll definitely read those to you. Um, I'll go over the the challenges first and then we'll go over the special rules for the chapter but we also get four cards nope you did not miss it you're all good um but feel free to ask if you think you miss it i'm more than happy to go over them again so challenge number one which may or may not be number one in order so we'll verify what they say no more rhymes now I mean it. Uh, requires Anigo and Fezzik must be in the same space, and Vizini must be on the prow. So the prow is this front part of the ship. It actually tells you because I don't know enough about ships to have told you that was the side of the ship that was the prow, being the forward section of the ship. So Vizini needs to be in the front of the ship. In the first, well, no, I may be wrong. It actually shows it as that one space. Not the whole front of three, just that one space. Number seven is the prow. Anybody want a peanut? <laughs> um, so we need Inigo and Fezzik in the same space. And Vizini in the prow. And then, reward, and then we have to discard one blue and one red. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm sorry to read the map. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, we have the Shrieking Eels. So the bow. I probably will forget that, but thank you, Peter. It's great that someone else knows. Uh, the Shrieking Eels, uh, challenge number two, requires Buttercup, must be in the water, and Fezzik must be at the railing, which says right here. And then we would discard one orange and one green card. And the quote. Oh yeah. So you said anybody want to paint that that quote is actually under challenge number one. 
I don't know if you can actually see that on screen or not. Um, but the challenge for the, uh, the quote for the shrinking eels is, she doesn't get eaten by the eels at this time. Or, no, that's not a question. Not, so she doesn't get eaten by the eels at this time. Period. And the last challenge is, whoever he is, he's too late. Uh, and this requires your ship must be in the final space of the map track. And you must have completed all the other challenges. So the final space is the Cliffs of Insanity. And the quote is, see? The Cliffs of, in of Insanity. But yeah, so we have a water space down here that can be moved into. But warning, you cannot move the ship while a character is in the water. Because we don't want to leave anyone behind. So we do have some special rules over here. So, for sailing, in order to move your ship to the next space on the map track, either Fezzik or Inigo must be in the same space as Vizini. And you must discard a card that matches the icon of the next space on the map track. So, here it shows like any, green, black, any, and so on. So, we're actually going to have to match, uh, discard matching cards for those tracks. Um, if... If Vizini is on the prow, you may discard any three cards in order to sail the ship one space. Okay, so it's either basically all three together, or, well, no, Vizini with Fezzik or Inigo in a particular color, or Vizini at the prow and three total for one space. And you may move your ship any number of times during your turn as long as you are able to discard the appropriate cards. Easy enough. This chapter is interrupted, meaning we flip over the replay card and don't pass the chapter to, for the first try if the mystery ship moves into the space occupied by our ship. And the plot. So 1 through 10, uh, move the thing. And the other thing, uh, we would have to move Vizini to the space on the board with the same number as the revealed plot card, and then move the mystery ship one space. Okay. 11 through 15 is, why do you keep looking behind us? Move the mystery ship two spaces. That's going to move fast. We are four of four for the first spots. Oh, yeah, that, that's a great point, Peter. Thanks for pointing that out. Um, I, we will have to move to get Vizini with either Fezzik or Ego before we can do that. Um, and the plot thickens with 16 to 18. You're sure nobody's following us? We would have to move the mystery ship two spaces along the map track and move Fezzik and Ignig to the start space in the middle of the ship. So it kind of seems like trying to keep Fezzik and Igneo in the middle of the ship keeps us in the safest position. And then inconceivable for 19 through 20 is discard two more plot cards and resolve their effects. So that's going to get difficult. Yeah, so we definitely need to get our ship moving fast. So let's see these spaces, which ones connect. Oh, so there's going to be a long path because this middle is blocked. So we have to move him out and around or these out and around. What seems like our fastest, simplest, most straight. Yeah, it does seem unforgiving. We may have got really lucky with this draw. But. Because our first turn, I feel we can take Vizini through the miracle space and then immediately draw into three cards. This way, we can keep moving him to the center and immediately start moving the ship fast. And then that gives us a, f a few rounds to draw into other car cards we need. So if you agree with that, Peter, let me know if you have a different idea. Let me know.
Yeah, because I'm thinking the one two gets us here. Immediately turn that in for three cards, two of which can move us to here, immediately allowing us to trigger four spaces. Yep, get the star. Let's go for it. So one two for our move. That gets our star. And then we move into storytelling. And when we do the storytelling, we can do these in in order by completing challenges, special cards, and such. And we said we're going to do the turn in our miracle for three cards. First thing, one, two, three. Now we do have a hand limit of six cards, but we're not going to worry about it right now because we plan to start using those up. Black, blue, and green. Let's look down the line. So the orange one we don't have, but we said any, we for sure need green and black. And then orange and blue are gonna be needed. And then black after that. And then within that was three innies. So the black's the last one we need. Uh, I'm going to hold on to the blacks in case we draw, because we're going to draw into other cards. So I'm going to hold on to the blacks. Probably use the two greens for the any spaces. But I'm going to probably have to use one of those. Like I didn't want to have to use the blue card yet, but I think we might. Yeah, we're going to have to use some of the blacks to move. Yeah, because I have two blacks to move. And we just have to start looking for ones. So yeah, I'm going to use our two blacks to move. One, two. And then we'll start with the beginning. Use a green for the any. A green here. Black. I'm going to use green for any. And then hold the blue for right after the orange. Yeah, it seems. I'm thinking if we focus on getting the ship farthest ahead. Oh, you're behind all this. Oh, meaning you 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 agree with it? Okay. For a second, I I, I read it. Probably like you're behind, as in you lost track of where we were. But I'm I th I think I got that you're behind it and that you agree with the moves we we're making. So if we get the ship far enough ahead, we have multiple turns to not worry about the mystery ship, to where we can collect enough cards for the challenges. And we're going to, yeah, I think keeping everyone together in the middle for now is our most straightforward option. So we're going to basically end this turn by drawing into two more cards. Oh, there's our orange. Yeah, so we're definitely going to hang out here for a little bit to move our ship forward then. Plot card number 20. That's going to hurt. Uh, because we can stop now if you want. Uh, but no, we don't. We're going to have to discard discard two more plot cards and resolve their effects. So, that means two cards. Number one is, the first one flipped is 12. I wasn't nervous. Maybe I was a little bit concerned, but that's not the same thing. So a 12 forces us to move the mystery ship two spaces. One, two. Second one was a 19. Oh, Really? So the vote of confidence is overwhelming. I am not confident at this point anymore because we now we have to do two more cards. Now, the bright side of this happening of 19 and 20 already coming out, we know we won't draw into those again until we go through all the cards. So this is nice in that we know for sure for quite a while we're only drawing one card each turn. So the first one's going to be 18. That hurts again because we have to move the mystery ship two spaces and move Fezzik and Inigo to the start space, which that didn't affect us because they're already there. Yeah, exactly, man, what just happened here? And our last one is eight. Okay, a little bit simpler here. 
And he's saying, wait, just wait. Exactly. We need to wait. Just wait. Hold up. What's going on here? Um, so in eight, we move Vizzini to the space on the board with the same number as the revealed plot card. So this time there's eight. And then move the mystery ship one space. Oof. I am glad we had that first draw to move our ship that fast because <laughs> we would have been screwed. Exactly. Tough first round. Fortunately, we planned it and thought about it. Um, yeah, so this next turn we can... Yeah, so we don't have enough for the challenge yet. Well, actually... Ooh, okay, so we have basically two to two options here. No, 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 mind, because that needs a green. So yeah, our, our primary option is going to move uh, Vizini back to the start space in the middle with everyone else with the two moves. And then we can at least move our ship twice. And then I think we need to go ahead and spend one move to bring Buttercup to the railing so it can prepare to have her go over into the water. Yep, move the boat is our key objective at the moment. Far enough ahead as possible. Yeah, so one, two, I'm gonna start discarding. We got orange and then blue. Discard them at the same time to make it easy. One, two, we do have one card here. It's a blue, we won't need it. Well, no, yeah. Discard it now for the any space. Have a little bit more buffer. And then we'll draw two cards ending our turn. Blue and green. Okay. Not what I wanted to see. And then our plot is going to be number one. So in this case, it moves. Vizini moves to one. Okay, that's going to be rough. And then move one space. Yep. Okay, so this next turn. Okay, well, we have one green, one blue. What we really need is a red and an, or an orange. Can't really do much this turn. So I think our best option, I'm going to move is any one space and Buttercup one space. Because either way, we can't move the ship. We can't complete a challenge yet. And then basically end the turn with drawing two cards again. See what we draw into. We found some orange. Yeah, so this is going to lead us to, to what we need to do with Buttercup. While the ship can't move. And then seven. That's still a one through ten. He's going to jump to seven over here. Whoa. Ooh, if we if we draw into red next the next turn that may help us out um move that move him move the ship beginning of the next turn I'm we have what we need for the shrieking eels because we need buttercup in the water Fezzik at the railing and orange green so I'm gonna for the move action have her move one Fezzik move one And then we can complete the challenge by turning in two cards. Yep, throw her over. Discard the two. And when we do that, we move Buttercup back up. And draw one card from the special deck. This might help us out. Let's see what we found. So we found a wild card. And this card can be used as any type of story card. I think, oh no, because we need them same spaces. So we can't move the ship currently. Because we need Fezit or Inigo in the same space as Vizzini. Which they are not. Because otherwise, I was going to say, oh, we could go wild as black, blue, orange for moving the ship. I may just hold those for the next turn. So is the first one blue? Okay, so yeah, the first one is blue-red. Oh, 
okay, I see what you're saying. If I discard the orange to move Inigo over to the same space as Fezzik, Fezzini's already got the prow. That would use all three of these cards, but we could draw two cards from the story deck. So we're going to get two cards right back. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. I think that might be our best option. Otherwise, we'd hold the three cards for the next turn to get start using move to get everyone together to move the ship. Now, I think challenge number one is going to work on this one. Yeah, no, I, I think that thought was a lot better. So, yeah, I'm going to discard the orange to move Fezzik to the center. So he's a little bit more central at minimum. Yeah. And then we're gonna disc by playing red, red for the wild, blue here. Ignigo Fezzik, same space, Vizini at the prow. Complete a challenge, yep. That was a great option, Peter. And then our reward is choose a new player and then draw two cards from the story deck. So immediately we draw two cards. Uh, black and red. We do need the black one. Um, I'm thinking discarding the red to start moving Vizini back. Hold the black because the next turn we can get Vizini all the way back to the center. Discard red, move Vizini once, and then end the turn by drawing two cards. And this gets us red and green. Pluck card number 15, which is move the ship to, uh, mystery ship two spaces. One, two, okay, yeah, we definitely need to get ship shape on this one. Beginning of the turn, we're gonna move two, one, two to the center. So the same space, we can at least start with the red discard to move the ship, but we still need blue and orange. So these don't do us, us much good. Hold the rest because he, he moves on the number cards. Yeah, so my thought was I wasn't, I, want, I moved him off of seven because I knew I wouldn't pull him back to seven. Um... And so, oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, I moved it a bit faster than you could type it. But it was the chance that he didn't move. He was two spaces away to immediately get him close. Because our start space is the most central on the board. Which, what I may do, but yeah, since we do know that he's going to be forced... Okay, red and green, we don't need for a little bit. He's going to be forced around. I may start moving Fezzik and Igneo around a little bit more. So they're more central to the two ends of the boat as Vizini gets moved around. And since we don't need red and green right now, I'm going to do that now to prepare for the plot. So we've already moved to one. We've moved to seven before. I'm just gonna, I don't know the rules on this. I'm just going to look through the cards we have. We've had seven. We've had one. We've had eight. So we've gone here, here, and here. So the likelihood we need to be close to this section and over here again. Buttercup's actually at the railing. goes there that's still two moves and I discarded two so I'm gonna move one two well really I only need to move one I'll move buttercup up and now wherever Vizini gets moved he's within two spaces at the beginning of next turn 
going to end the turn, draw two cards. Red and orange, that hurts us because now we can't do anything with those next turn. Plot is 10. He goes there. Well, that helps because one, only nine's left. So I'm going to move him one down. No, he's going to actually move to, he may not move. I'm going to move him one down. Because then if this doesn't move next time, we can still use two to move them together. But he's more likely to get shifted out here. Or possibly to nine, but still within two. And then, so we did plot next turn. No, that, that was that. Now we need to draw cards. You have to go, Peter. Thank you, thank you, Peter, for showing up tonight, hanging out with me. It was, it was a joy having you in chat. I hope you have a great evening and a great week. I will be on stream tomorrow with Chris, the charity board gamer. We are playing Overwatch at it's either 8.30 or 9 p.m. Eastern on his channel, I think. And then my next personal stream will be Friday night at 6 p.m. Eastern, where we're going to be doing Unboxing of the Week chatting together and you can help me choose what games to unbox next but i do hope you have a wonderful evening and week so thank you thanks again uh yeah yeah uh, ending this chapter is gonna be hard for me but I, I think i'm gonna try to finish this chapter before i stop streaming Thanks, Peter. Uh, so where was I? I? Drew two cards for the end of the round. Draw a plot, 17. Move the ship two spaces. One, two. Ooh, that's going to hurt. And move Fezzik and Nego to the start. Well, we can deal with that. Because now we got blue and black and orange. So yes, we're going to move them together for the move action. I'm going to discard. Oh no, I need blue. I don't have blue. No, no. I think this is going to end the chapter for me. Because I need blue. I don't have blue. Ouch. Yeah, I can't do it. So I'm going to have to draw two cards. I don't think I can prevent it. And four, yep. He goes there. He goes there. And we lose the chapter. So I'm going to flip this over. We lost the chapter. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Well, now I can go over the rules what happens when you lose a chapter. Okay. So we were interrupted. At the end of a player's turn, if they can't draw a plot card because there's no more left in the deck, I may have messed up and sh no, we didn't get to the end of the deck. Last chapter, we were fine. Um, or we could be defeated. The chapter is interrupted if the mystery ship moves in the space occupied. So we're interrupted. Okay. And when interrupted, we flip the tile for the first time, clear the board, and start the chapter over. Okay, easy enough. So he's going to go there. They'll go there. They're all here. We clear the board. We're going to do a shuffle. Hopefully we have a better draw and or don't have that terrible first turn that the ship moved, what, like five spaces at once. We really didn't have a chance after that. We started really good, found the colors we needed, and then could not find the rest. So yeah, we kind of shows you have to hold on to the cards. Kind of wondering if rushing the map track as far as possible before you even consider doing a challenge is a better option.
So if you're just joining in, I am playing The Princess Bride, the adventure book game. This is a six chapter kind of mini mission style game where each chapter can take about 15 minutes or so. It's for ages 10 and up for one to four players as it is a co-op game where players play together trying to complete the chapters uh, from the story of The Princess Bride. Now, what just happened is I didn't lose this chapter, but I was interrupted by the grandson because he didn't like what was going on in the story because, because I messed up a couple of moves. We got to a, not a full-on lose condition, but an interruption is what they call it. If you're interrupted twice in the same chapter, that is when you can lose the game. So what you're attempting to do is beat all six chapters without being interrupted twice within a chapter so you can actually beat the whole game. There are ways to basically only play a couple chapters then come back and complete the rest of the chapters or sit down play everything. In this chapter, uh, this is chapter two, Escape by the Sea. Currently, Buttercup has been abducted by a trio of strange characters as they make their escape by sea and a mysterious ship gives chase. So we have the miniatures for uh, we have Vizzini, Fezzik, Igneo, and Buttercup on the board, as shown in setup that we discussed. We have our ship on a ship track, map track, and a mystery ship chasing us. We're trying to avoid getting caught by that mystery ship. We're also moving around trying to complete certain challenges. So come along with me. Hope you enjoy it. If, if you want to play along, help me decide my moves. Tell me in chat. Tell me about your week. Let me know how you're doing. So I've drawn four cards. Reset. Restart. Okay. Let's see how I do. I have a blue. I have a green. I have an orange. And I have, I hope we win card, where we're allowed to draw two cards from the story deck. Now at the beginning of every turn, we also move either two characters in one space each or choose one character to move between zero and two spaces. The luck of this scenario is you really want to go pick up the star with those two moves. And that star can, we can turn in four cards. So what I'm going to do, immediately make that move. Then on my turn, I can be playing cards. I can discard cards to move. I can complete challenges if I have the correct cards to meet it. Into this scenario, as soon as... Uh, Vizzini is in the same space as either Fezzik or Igneo, then we can start discarding certain cards to move the map track. So in this case, I'm going to hold on to my Miracle token, and instead I'm going to play my Hope We Win card, which allows us to draw two cards. What we're looking for is a combination of cards that work on the map track and allow us to move around the ship. Or discard as extra cards. Now we do know that we can play any card for the first ship movement. The second one will be orange, so I'm gonna, or not orange, green. So I'm gonna set that aside because we don't want to waste that and use it up. Then it's gonna be black, any, and orange. So I'm gonna hold on to that orange because that's gonna be hard to come by. Now we have three blue that we can use up. One of those we'll probably use for the any. Now I want to move two spaces to go and start moving the ship this turn. So what I'm gonna going to do is actually do I want to do that? Nope. I'm gonna use the miracle token to draw three more cards, so we can really get some planning going on here. And we've drawn a green, a red, and an orange. So in this case, we're still looking for a black card, so it's gonna be a lot harder on us. But we do know for the challenges, we need a blue and a red, or orange and a green. So that's basically that and those sets giving us currently an extra card. Those challenges are helpful to take care of. You kind of have to decide when you really want to do them. So I'm th and then we also have a card hand limit of six. So we're going to have to play quite a few of these cards. Otherwise, we're going to start losing them. 
So I'm going to discard two of them. Let's start with a blue and a blue to move to the center with this character. No, I'm actually going to move Igneo up there with him. This allows us to start moving the ship. Now I think what I want to do, I want to hold on to the orange and the green. So we might do one of the challenges in a minute. Now we need this green one. Red and blue work well. So I think I'm going to go with, now I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to do the orange for the first ship movement. Because it could be any. And then I'm going to discard the green. To move that. So now we currently still have the cards needed for either of the two challenges. And we can go to the to the next step of the turn where we draw cards and see how the plot advances. So we're going to draw two cards, which puts us, will put us at six cards for the hand, so we won't have to get rid of any extra. Two red love cards. We're going to draw a plot card. This is 11. On an 11, we're going to move the mystery ship two spaces. So we're trying to keep ahead of that mystery ship, so we'll have to be careful of that one. So now we'll go to the beginning of the next turn. We know we can't do a black card yet. So I think moving towards one of these challenges is our easiest option. So what I'm going to do, one of our goals is to have Buttercup in the water, Fuzzik uh, at the railing right here. So I'm going to have Buttercup go jump into the water by moving two. And then for the actual turn, I'm going to discard one card to move a space with Fezzik. This allows us to meet the conditions of Buttercup in the water, Fezzik at the railing, and we have an orange and a green we can discard. Discarding those two completes the challenge, allowing us to move Buttercup back up to the railing and draw a card from the special deck. This special card is skipped to the end. Uh, do not draw a plot card this turn. That will be helpful to hold on to once the ship gets really close to us and we want to survive an extra turn. So I'm going to hold on to that now because it's not holding our hand limit up, but if it does hold us up, then we can kind of use it as an extra card because we don't want it forced out of our hand. So I'm going to end the turn by drawing my cards. Drawing plot cards. We've got orange and green back, which is kind of helpful. And then we draw a plot card. Seven. So when we draw anything from one to ten, we move Vizzini to the space on the board with the same number right up here. And move the mystery ship one space. Well, that, that does actually help us quite a bit because one of the challenges is have him up at the prow and then Inigo and Fez in the same space. So what we can use for our moves now, get these characters back together, and then we can discard a blue and a red. So I'm going to use the standard move of 1-2, and we're going to end up discarding a card. And since we don't need red for any of the track... We'll get rid of red for the movement. So now, they're together. He's at the prow. We can discard a blue and a red, which we happen to have in our hand. This allows us to complete that challenge. To draw two cards, and we get to draw two cards from the story deck. So that's going to help us out. Now, to do this last challenge, we need our ship all the way down the track with the Clips of Insanity. So we're going to have a little trouble with that. If we're, since we can't, we're not finding any black cards yet. Oh no. But we're also not going to be able to move the ship unless Vizani is with one of these two characters on the same spot. So, black, any, orange, blue. So we do know, again, we don't need the red card. So I, I feel that moving Vizani, uh, he's up there. Hasn't drawn any of those. Let 
I'm going to discard one card to move Igneo one space this way. So he's a bit closer to the top of the boat in case Rosini gets moved again. Actually, uh, yeah. Nope, I'm not going to do that. Keep him moved back. Instead, I'm going to play my special card of skip to the end, and we just won't draw plot cards, so we're just going to draw two cards to end the turn. And then, so no one ends up moving at the end of that. Okay, we're going to, now here's where we're going to struggle. We still don't have black cards, so we're going to have a lot of trouble with this shit. So those blues are critical, black's critical, orange is critical. Yeah, so I'm going to prepare for Fazini to probably be moved around. Discord, one red. And then what do we need? Black, any, orange, blue, any. So the green's going to be a while before we need it. So I'm also going to discard green to move him one more. So now, wherever... Vizini gets moved, we are close enough to move to him, and we won't have to discard extra cards because of our hand limit. So I'm going to draw two cards to end the turn. Oh, finally, we found a black. And we have to draw a plot 16. When we draw 16 through 18, we have to move the mystery ship two spaces on two, and move Fezzik and Inigo to the start space. Well, that's a bummer. That was rough. Well, beginning of the next turn, we can move a character to. Yeah, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go one, two, discard an orange to move him to the middle with, ev with everyone else there. Now we can actually move the ship. Pay the black here. I'm going to pay the orange one for the any color. Pay an orange, pay a blue, and pay a blue. We're going to end that round by drawing two cards again. we got a green and a black. Well, the black's helpful, but we do have to draw a plot card. 15, 11 to 15, move the ship two spaces, mystery ship two spaces. Beginning of the next turn. I'm not going to move anyone because you do have a choice to pick one character, zero to two, no movement. Pay a black to move on the track because we have Vizzini with at least one of the other two characters. And that's going to be that turn, draw two, and we'll keep moving. Two blacks, not what I wanted to see. Plot cards, a foot, 20. Discard two more plot cards to resolve their effects. Number one is 19. That's going to force two more cards. Ouch, ouch. Number 12 is move the ship two spaces. 18, move the ship two spaces and move them to the start space. We've done that. Six, move Vizzini to number six right here and move one ship. Ooh, ouch. Okay. I think we're in trouble, boys. We are in trouble. I don't see a way out of this. Because for the final challenge, we have to have the ship all the way up the track. And... We're nowhere near there. Do I got black, black, green? Can't do anything. Yeah, I just have to draw into cards and hopefully we survive this next turn, which I don't think we will. Yeah, number eight. He moves to eight and he and advances one space. That ends the chapter. 
with another interruption. That's two interruptions for the same chapter, which means we lose the game. Well, at least we tried. That was interesting to, to learn. We'll have to try this again another night. Hopefully we can beat this chapter and move forward. But then again, it's also set up, so if you really wanted to, you could just play any chapter you want. But there is a slight deck building aspect in that all these special cards that we've been drawing get added to the deck, allowing us special abilities in future chapters. So I may end up playing this again, starting from chapter one, to see what cards come into it, if I can get past this chapter or not. But I do appreciate everyone who came, hung out in chat, talked with me, and I hope you all had a great weekend, great Monday. I hope you will you have a great week coming up. And if you want to come hang out with me on, on stream, uh, feel free uh, tomorrow night it's either 8.30 or 9 o'clock Eastern at the Charity Board Gamer Twitch stream. We'll be playing Overwatch together, just hanging out. Uh, kind of a segment we call it. It's kind of after dark hours for our after the show stream. But when we're playing video games, it's shooting things badly. Because most of us are not that great at video games. Um, and then, of course, I've talked about where my new schedule is. Friday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern. We have Unboxing the Week. Hang out with chat. Just kind of talk about how our week was. Get to know each other better. And then I will show you a small selection of the games I have yet to unwrap. So they are new to me games that are still in shrink. You'll help me choose which ones to unwrap. I will unwrap them on stream. Talk about, give uh, give my first impressions for those games. For the, like the artwork, the components what the rule books look like. Uh, and then if you have questions as I'm unwrapping it, you'll, you can freely ask me right then and there. I can immediately show you what's in the box and answer your questions as opposed to it just being a later stream. I unbox it alone. You try to post a question underneath the video. You can immediately ask while I'm streaming it. And then of course, what we're doing here, Monday night starting at 8 p.m. Eastern are my Meeple Mondays where we play games. So, typically, there's going to be pieces on the board. Um, sometimes I'm learning a game. Sometimes I'm teaching a game. But most games, it's either you can play along at home with or without the game in some way. Or you can talk to me about the moves I'll be making in the game. So, today, Peter was very talkative in chat, very helpful, and agreeing or, or giving me ideas for the best moves as I played this game and learned it today. So thank you for showing up tonight. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, uh, please leave a like. Follow uh, if you're watching later on YouTube. Leave a like. Subscribe there. If you're watching on Twitch, leave a follow. Uh, of course, I'm still newer, so I'm trying to get that count up and streaming enough so you can subscribe eventually. Um, but thank you for watching. And as always, play games and spread joy.